YouTube, welcome to Console Domination. My name is Dreadlock Spun. Uh, today is day one of a series that I hope to continue monthly uh, for as long as possible. <laughs> um, a series that I'm calling Cross Platform Gaming. So basically what we're going to talk about um, in this series is uh, literally any game I bloody well want to. No, <laughs> literally um, we're going to be talking about games that have been released on a certain platforms, i.e. Uh, either PlayStation 4, Xbox One or PC and are being released now late, at a later date on an opposing platform or being opened up for all platforms. Um, the reason for this is that I think a lot of console gamers tend to shy away from games that have been on PC, not you know worrying that them being those games being adapted for console that they're not, they're going to be of a lesser quality or whatever like that. And um, for PC gamers especially, um, we just wait and wait and wait and wait for console games to be released on PC. Uh, so yeah, basically I want to talk about that kind of aspect of the industry and um, you know there's going to be a lot of what needs to change kind of topics and how we as consumers can we as uh, gaming consumers can aid that process and also what are the pros and cons of playing these games on either platform every month I'll have a new game um, I'll, I'll probably have a new couple of games but every month I'll have one new game that will, will mainly feature and um, what I'll do is I'll talk about the platform that's currently on I'll talk about why it's a good game to play I'll, uh, I'll rate it and um, and then we'll talk about the decisions that the developers have made to to move that game from the exclusive platform that it's on at the moment to a more a more broader a broader spectrum. So my main objective here is um, to promote a more a more free world of gaming. Um, I, I'd love to be the leader of a movement that abolishes consoles and abolishes PC and you know uh, was able to create just one console that everyone could play games on but I, I, you know I'm not setting my goals too high right now. Um, <laughs> basically um, I, I see the need for multiple platforms. I see every platform has its pros and its cons and what we're going to do here is we are going to talk about those pros and cons. Um, no PC Master Race talk in the comments, please. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, this month's topic is going to be Elder Scrolls Online. Um, I've been playing Elder Scrolls Online as a uh, as a pretty hardcore fan for about 12 months now. I was in the pre-release for it on PC and. Um, you know, I did all the beta testing and all of that. I am a massive advocate for the game. I think it's definitely worth spending your time on. Um, and that's pretty much how I um, rate my games. You know, the game's either worth spending time on, because let's face it, time is finite. If, you know, if the game's not worth spending time on, it's not really worth playing. Um, it's either worth spending time on, worth a quick playthrough, or it's not worth your money you know, you get it for free and have a quick play, but whatever. So, basically, um, as far as those goals is concerned, for me, uh, it's worth your time. It's worth playing, and it's worth buying. And especially now that it's gone free to play, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are very happy about, and a lot more of you are probably anticipating the release date for it on console, which is the 19th of June. Um, as it stands, it has been pushed back a few times, and the beta test, by the way, if you're interested, um, I'll leave a link to the Elder Scrolls Online website in the descriptions down below, so you can get involved in the beta test uh, for the console release. Uh, it currently hasn't been picked to a date, so, I mean, that's a little bit concerning, considering, you know, they're releasing it in June, it's not that far away, and they haven't even put a date on the beta test yet. Um, I will say one thing, Elder Scrolls Online had a rocky start on PC, uh, <laughs> nothing went right, <laughs> nothing went right, there was so many glitches, and that's probably, you know, it's an Elder Scrolls game, it wouldn't be an Elder Scrolls game if it didn't have a crap ton of glitches at release, <laughs> it was part of what gives it its personality, but, um, no, don't expect amazing things straight up, but, after they iron out the kinks, I think that, yeah, on console, I think this game could really work. Um, obviously, uh, Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim have all been released on PC, obviously, and they've all been released on console. Um, 
and they've all done quite well on, on both platforms. Um, I The first Elder Scrolls game I ever played was Oblivion, and I played it on Xbox 360. Then I bought Skyrim for PC, and it was just as good. I suppose when you play on console, you miss out on a few things, like um, using the console commands, <laughs> which is always good fun, especially, especially if you're... Um, Especially if you're into the whole, you know, toggle god mode, being able to carry whatever you want, unlock any door you want, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're playing it on PC, you really get that advantage, but if you're more of a realist in your gaming and you prefer to actually play them than playing on console, you know, that doesn't that doesn't come into it, so it doesn't matter. Um, I suppose the other thing that you miss out on in the console world is add-ons and mods uh, that you get with the PC version of the game. They are literally, if we're talking about Skyrim, there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of mobs. There are mods, there are YouTube channels dedicated to modding Skyrim. <laughs> like it is incredible. Um, as far as um, as far as add-ons and mods go for ESO, um, I'm pretty sure that there will be add-ons that you will be able to get for the game on console. Um, if not, it'd be awful. Um, but with the way that Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are set up these days, um, uh, downloading downloading data for your game seems like a pretty easy thing to do. So uh, hopefully, um, hopefully that is a thing because the add-ons really help. Uh, add-ons make the game really awesome. Um, not that the game isn't already awesome, but I'll also leave a link in the description down below for a good add-on, a good website to go to to get add-ons for the PC games, just so you can have a look at the kind of thing that I'm talking about, console players. So why should you, as a console gamer, want to get into Elder Scrolls Online? Well, it's it's a really, really cool world. Like, Tamriel itself, Nern, is just an amazing world with incredibly rich and really good lore. Not to mention that ESO has made it look pretty damn good. It is a sexy looking world, especially if, if you're in the Old Mary Dominion, um, which is one of the three packs in the game, one of the three um, alliances. If you're in the Old Mary Dominion, it just looks beautiful. Like, it looks so stunning. Um, you go back to Morrowind in the, in the Ebonhard Pact, and, you know, you get the Ashlands and the volcanoes, and, and you even get to visit Skyrim. And that looks awesome, like, this, just the landscapes look so beautiful. And um, they really set the mood for the game as well, I think. I think they've done a good job with architecture and um, kind of giving each race its own unique personality in its, in its architecture and in its homeland and in its people as well. Um, yeah, lore-wise, amazing. Like, the amount of hidden little things that you find throughout the game. It's just like playing, in that regard, it's just like playing Skyrim. Like, there's so much rich, heavy lore, and it's, yeah. As for a role player, amazing. So, skill lines. Skill lines in ESO. So, basically, um, there's a couple of different types of skill lines. Um, you have race skill lines, which are mainly just passives. Then you have guild skill lines and world skill lines. They're kind of the same thing, uh, depending on fractions that you join and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, vampirism, werewolf, uh, lycanthropy, lycanthropy. And then you have, uh, like I said, you've got race skill lines, you've got world and uh, guild skill lines, and you've also got skill lines based on uh, class. So... Uh, each class has three skill lines that, that are solely just for that class. Um, and then you have skill lines that everyone can use. And th this includes like, weapon skill lines, armor skill lines, that kind of stuff. So, with all this, you know, with all this that's going on, you can create... The, there is an endless amount of different types of... Um, of characters that you can create, you know, you can come up with so many different variables, so many different builds, it's, it's absolutely incredible. You can mess around with it to the point where you will never bump into someone that has the same skill attributes as you. Um, and now with this champion system, which if you want to, if you want to, uh, a rundown on the new champion system and the new justice system, um, over at my channel, I've got, a. a 20 minute video dedicated to those two systems and explaining them in detail um, the link will be in the description down below hopefully um, there's just more options like the champion system is just 
added a crap load, like an incountable amount of passives to the game. Apart from the world, apart from the lore, and apart from the skill vines, you've got a really robust and actually challenging crafting system. Um, you can pick from numerous different uh, disciplines and crafting. There's woodwork, provisioning, metalwork, um, there's like uh, food, um, uh, what else? Oh, enchanting, and um, yeah, all of them have their own materials that you have to farm in the, in, in the wild. And you know, I haven't found myself um, like grinding uh, materials because they they pop up pretty regularly. Um, there's a there's a breaking down procedure that you have to go through, and and like you have to refine the materials, but. I mean, obviously, there are also guild stores and things like that where you can buy these materials if you grind for cash, uh, if you grind for gold, as it were, um, within the game, then yeah, I mean, that's doable as well. But, I don't know, the way the game's set up is you don't have to grind. The crafting system's fantastic. Um, it keeps you busy in lower level, and then when you reach a higher level, there's uh, an immense amount of end game. There's uh, so much end game, and they just keep adding end game. Yeah, Craglon's a good one. Um, trial runs and uh, PvP's great. Uh, PvP system in Cyrodiil is absolutely freaking awesome. If you haven't looked at any in-game footage of playing PvP um, in Cyrodiil, I strongly recommend it. It's 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 really, really, really fun. Um, taking down a castle, like knocking down a castle wall and like running in with your army and killing everyone. Yeah, it's, it's really good and, and you have to be strategic. You have to be really strategic to PvP. Um, as far as PvE goes, I mean, you've got world bosses, you've got um, dolmens that drop from the sky, you've got delves and group dungeons, which, um, you know, it's one of those games you can play by yourself or you can zone chat, get some help, get involved, join guilds. Um, PvE guilds are the best because there's always people looking for help in PvE guilds and it's good fun. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. For you that have already been playing, all right. So for you gamers out there that have already been playing Elder Scrolls on PC, there is a uh, transfer option. If you prefer to play on console, you can transfer your account from PC to your console of choice. Uh, console of choice being between PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Um, if you're an Australian, the price will be around about $20 from what I understand at the moment. Um, if you're British, it's about £13 and it's about 15 to 20 bucks for, for you Americans out there. Um, what you'll get is you will get a split copy of your account so you will have an exact replica of your account you all of your characters all of your items in all of your inventories all of the items in your bank and all of your skill progressions and experience will be duplicated you will have a version on console and a version on your pc but from that point onwards, progress that you make on either platform is completely separate. In essence, you basically have two copies of the game that you can play on either platform. The things that don't get transferred, um, uh, guild memberships, friends lists, mailing lists, um, uh, leaderboard progression, so if you're on the leaderboard or if you've got, you know, um, if you've been doing trials and stuff like that, that doesn't get transferred over. Um, all of your uh, achievements do. Um, you get to keep your achievements as far as I'm aware, which means your dyes as well for all of your clothes. Um, they come across with you. Yeah, so that's your transfer option. I, I, I think it's I think it's a great idea. I think a lot of people bought this game on PC. Um, being console gamers, they bought it on PC just because they wanted to play it. Um, and I think this is going to get them back into it. For those, you know, they probably didn't like sitting in front of their PC playing the game. They probably thought, oh, you know, um, prefer to be playing Halo on my Xbox or something like that. As far as pros and cons go, well there doesn't look like there's going to be much of a difference. If you play it on console or PC, it's literally going... The only difference is going to be the community. So there's already a well-established community on the PC servers, but having the transfer option, I think, eliminates that newbie community feel that you're going to get on the uh, on the console. You're going to have a um, you're going to have a few players that have been playing it for a long time on those servers, and um, 
I think that will that that will keep the community kind of going. I think uh, a lot of the stuff that comes over from a lot of the things that have been figured out and sussed out on the PC servers are going to eventually transfer over to the console servers, and I think it's going to. I think I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Um, I hope I hope it works out well because I'm really looking forward to seeing. I mean, this is a perfect example of what this segment's all about. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how it pans out, and I will keep updates. I will. I have a few friends that are going to be playing it on console, so I'll keep updating you um, in regards to that. Um, the other thing is, yeah, controller. That's really your biggest difference. So if you are a WASD fan and you want to. You know, you like using the keyboard for these sorts of games, um, then that's preferable. If you prefer your joysticks and your directional pads and your triggers and all that kind of stuff, then yeah, go right ahead. I think um, as far as as far as menu options are concerned, I mean, all of your abilities on the PC are between one and number one and number five. So you've got you know five abilities and then an ultimate. Uh, when you heal yourself. There's kind of a wheel that comes up, and you've got like all your potions and all your like quick select items. So you kind of that's kind of a console thing anyway, because generally you press a button and that wheel uh, circular menu will pop up, and then you'll just select it with your joystick. Um, so no, I mean that's that's perfectly fine. Um, there is a first person and third person option for this game. The first person option has come so far, considering, you know, three months before the original PC release, that they weren't even gonna let you play in first person, which was just like, sorry, sorry what? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that has come so far and is graphically intense now. Uh, yeah, a lot of people tend, uh, from what I've seen on YouTube, a lot of people tend to actually play in first person, which, you know, as far as situational awareness goes, it's just stupidity. But, um, but no, that, that that's great. I really like that console. I think it'll be easier. I think it'll be easier playing first person. Um, than it is on PC. I suppose the other thing is, and the question. The question lies, will you be able to split screen it on console? Um, I think that's a dying trend um, for a lot of games, just because of LAN parties not being as popular as they used to be, uh, having these online servers that you can go on and play is eliminating that. But if you could sit two guys, or two guys, or two girls, and guy and a girl in a room on the one screen and play Elder Scrolls Online, that would be pretty awesome. Um, if you know, because I've done my research and I haven't seen anything like that, so if you know if that's going to be a possibility, please leave a comment in the comments list down below. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, Elder Scrolls is definitely the game that I would invest my time in. Um, I do currently invest my time in, and apart from the kinks that have been washed out over time, I know the development team are dedicated to making this a uh, long-term support game. Uh, it's going to be around for a while, and I know the plan is to eventually open up the entirety of Tamriel. Every single little bit of Tamriel will eventually be open to gamers. So that is going to be um, that is going to be something that I look forward to um, immensely. Because let's face it, the only thing better than an Elder Scrolls game is an Elder Scrolls game that you can travel cross continent with your friends. I mean. Haven't you always wanted that? <laughs> Playing Skyrim, just going, no one cares about the level that my character's at because I can't play with anyone. It was just awful. <laughs> Alright, so um, so that's my little rant about Elder Scrolls Online. Um, tune in next month. Uh, like I said, this, these will be monthly videos. So tune in next month, and I, I hope you've enjoyed it. If, if so, um, don't forget to like the videos, I know Console Domination would really appreciate that. Link to my personal channel is in the descriptions down below, and if they're nice to me, they might even be a little beep right there. Um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for me. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, uh, I hope that it's been informative. And um, as I said, there'll be links in the description down below for the official Elder Scrolls forums, uh, for the, uh, the add-ons website and even for my personal channel, which I strongly recommend you check out if you're interested in this sort of stuff. Um, short from that, thank you to Console Domination for uh, uploading this video, 
and I hope to see you all next month with my next instalment of cross-platform gaming. My name is Jodlock Spartan, reporting for Console Domination, and I hope to see you guys on the servers. Catch you later. <laughs> Yeah.